the dictatorship of the future, I think, will be very unlike uh, the dictatorships which we've been familiar with in the immediate past. I mean, take another book prophesying the future, uh, which was a very remarkable book, uh, George Orwell's 1984. Mm -hmm. Well, this book was written at the height of the Stalinist regime and just after the Hitler regime. And he, there he foresaw a dictatorship using entirely the methods of terror, the methods of physical violence. Now, I, I think what, what is going to happen in the future is the dictators will find, as the old saying goes, that you can do everything with bayonets except sit on them. That if you want to preserve your power indefinitely, you have to get the consent of the ruled. And this they will do, partly by drugs, as I foresaw in, uh, in Brave New World, partly by these uh, new techniques of, uh, uh, of propaganda. They will do it by bypassing the sort of rational side of man and appealing to his uh, subconscious and his uh, deeper emotions and uh, his physiology even, and so making him actually love his slavery. I mean, I think this is the danger, that actually people may be in some ways happy under the new uh, regime, but they will be happy in situations where they oughtn't to be happy. The danger, it seems to me, in a democracy is this. I mean, what does a democracy depend on? A democracy depends on the individual voter making an intelligent and rational choice for what he regards as his enlightened self-interest in any given circumstance. But what these people are doing, I mean, what both for their particular purposes for selling goods and the dictatorial um, propagandists are doing, is to try to bypass the rational side of man and to appeal directly to these unconscious forces below the surface so that you are in a way making nonsense of the whole democratic procedure which is based on conscious choice of, on rational grounds. And I think we shall see probably uh, all kinds of uh, new devices uh, coming into the picture. I mean, the, for example, this thing which got a good deal of publicity last autumn a subliminal projection. I mean, as it stands, this thing, I think, is of uh, no menace to us at the moment. But I was talking the other day to one of the people who has done most experimental work in the uh, in psychological laboratory with this, who was saying precisely this, that it is not at the moment a danger, but once you've established a principle uh, that something works, you can be absolutely sure that the technology of it is going to improve steadily. And I mean, his view of the subject was that, uh, well, maybe they will use it to some extent in the 1960 campaign, but they will probably use it a good deal and much more effectively in the 1964 campaign, because this is the kind of rate at which technology advances. And we'll be persuaded to vote for a candidate that we do not know that we are being persuaded to vote exactly. for. Exactly. I mean, this is the rather alarming mm. feature, that you're being persuaded below the level of choice and reason. Uh, all technology is in itself morally neutral. These are just powers which can either be used well or ill. It's the same thing with atomic energy. We can either use it to blow ourselves up or we can use it as a substitute for the coal and the oil which are running out. These are all instruments for obtaining power and obviously the passion for power is one of the most moving passions that exist in man and is, after all, this is all democracies are based on the proposition that power is very dangerous and that it's... Uh, extremely important not to let any one man or any one small group have too much power for too long a time. After what are the British and American constitutions except devices for limiting power? And all these uh, new devices are extremely efficient instruments for the imposition of power by small groups over larger masses. And I think what we're going to see uh, is a, a a people on the whole with very little freedom, but with an oligarchy on top enjoying a considerable measure of freedom and a very high standard of living. What I feel very strongly is that we mustn't be caught by surprise by our own advancing technology. This has happened again and again in history. With technology has advanced and this changes social conditions. And suddenly people have found themselves in a situation which they didn't foresee and doing all sorts of things they didn't really want to do. We can foresee and we can do a good deal to forestall. I mean, after all, the price of freedom is eternal vigilance. This 